my dear boys and girls this is uh, md rajaul islam lecturer department of zoology today we wants to discuss about the animal diversity and classification of the vast animal kingdom so dear boys and girls let's start welcome to animal diversity first of all the question is what is animal diversity and the definition is all the genetic and species diversity found in animals of soil air and aquatic habitat is known as animal diversity animal diversities are noticed in three steps or categories and they are it may be ecosystem diversity species diversity and genetic diversity then uh, the next question it is uh, what is classification the methods of arrangement of different animals into phylum class order genus and species on the basis of their similar characteristics is known as classification scientist aristotle john ray and carolus linnaeus are the notable name in the history of classification Naturalist Carolus Linnaeus is called the father of taxonomy. Taxonomy, the physical branch of biology, who is discussed about the principle of classification, identification, preservation, conservation of animals, etc. Then, first of all, thing Aristotle, he was considered as the introducer of classification. Aristotle, he is the father of zoology. Uh, at first he described the life history of animal and it is the introducer of animal classification then the classification system of aristotle first of all on the basis of color of blood on the basis of color of blood aristotle classified the animal kingdom into two groups namely inaima and anaima look at here the word a in case of biology the word a it indicates not something absent so inaima the inaima are that animals whose blood is red colored and they are vertebrate and anaima a for not blood is not red colored and the example is invertebrate animal the second classification system it is on the basis of reproduction on the basis of reproduction aristotle classified the whole living whole animal world animal kingdom into two groups these are oviparous and viviparous oviparous fish amphibia reptilia and avis there belongs to oviparous they reproduce through eggs that means offspring uh, comes out by hatching the egg and viviparous germination that is uh, mammalian animal their reproduction is viviparous type uh, viviparous means the origin the formation or the animals comes through birthing again on the basis of number of cell external structure coelom presence of digestive system anaima again divided into different groups then the next topic it is a basis of classification these are the some basis most of the important basis of classifications first of all level of organization then body axis and plane coelom body symmetry metamerism polarity appendages cleavage germ layer notochord mode of nutrition habit and mode of life and last one it is the elementary canal these are the basis of classification and on the basis of this criteria the animals of the animal kingdom they are classified into different ways different categories so let's start first of all grade of organization one of the most important basis of classification on the basis of grade of organization or uh, organization the animals are classified first of all cellular grade of organization 
this is an aggregation of cells that are functionally differentiated a division of labor is evident so that some cells are concerned with for example reproduction or other with nutrition and the example of cellular grade of organization it is the animal belongs to phylum porifera and a specific example it is the spawns secondly cell tissue grade of organization an aggregation of similar cells into definite patterns or layers and uh, organized to perform a common function to form a tissue example animals of phylum nidaria tissue grade of organization are there then tissue organ grade of organization an aggregation of tissue into organ is a further step of complexity organs are usually composed of more than one kind of tissue and have a more specialized function than the tissue and the animals belongs to this group that is tissue organ grade of organization it is example it is the animals belongs to phylum platyhelminthes the next topic next classification it is the organ system grade of organization here the modification is transform into organ and system level organs works together to perform some functions producing the highest level of organization and organ system systems are associated with basic body functions such as circulation respiration digestion excretion etc and the example of organ system grade of organization it is most of the animal phylum including mollusca arthropoda chordata etc so this is all about this is about the level of organization then the next basis it is the symmetry and the question is what is symmetry greek word symmetry means due proportion it is the arrangement of the parts of the animal bodies in relation to centralized the axis a state of divisibility in two or more similar halves on the basis of symmetry the animals are classified into first of all asymmetrical the animal that don't show any sort of symmetry that means you can't you can't dissect it into two or more equal halves the shape of animal is irregular type and the example of asymmetry it is spongyla that is this pons pyloglobosa this is very important pyloglobosa belongs to phylum mollusca protozoan animal for example amoeba proteus etc look at here this is the pyloglobosa or apple's name you can't you can't dissect it into equal halves and this is why we can say this animal pyloglobosa belongs to phylum mollusca it shows asymmetry then spherical symmetry those animal whose bodies are of spherical type can be divided into equivalent halves by plane passing through the center if this is the center you can dissect it through longitudinally into two equal halves transversely into two equal halves or like this you can you can divide it more than one more than two equal halves passing on the center and this is a, a colony of volvox example of spherical symmetry it is volvox globator radiolaria and heliozoa then radial symmetry the arrangement of organs around a central point is such that there are two or more planes in which the organism can be cut to give similar halves for example cylindrates hydra aurelia astropecton tinophores and echinoderms asteria rubens macrodium snail etc this is the example of this is the this is the presentation of radial symmetry you can divide this hydra through this central axis by two times into four equal halves and that means it shows radial symmetry then biradial symmetry when the body 
components are arranged with similar parts on either side of the central axis and each of the four sides of the body is identical to opposite side but different from the adjacent side it is called biradial symmetry and the animals belongs to two non-major phyla tinophora and anthozoa it shows biradial symmetry bilateral symmetry the arrangement of organs of an organism in such a way that there is only one plane of division that will give to similar halves it is called bilateral symmetry and the animals belongs to phylum annelida arthropoda then chordata this shows bilateral symmetry so this is about the symmetry the one of the most important uh, basis of classification of animal kingdom look at this figure this is an animal belongs to phylum annelida and this animal the body of this animal it is composed of numerous segments just observe this figure it is composed of numerous segments and you can also observe that each segment is equal so then now the next basis of classification it is on the basis of number of segments presence of segments structure shape and size of the segments that an animal possesses and this segmentation it is called metamerism so our next topic that is the basis of classification it is the metamerism so metamerism definition metamerism is the serial repetition of similar body segments along the longitudinal axis of the body each segment then now is called metamere or somite look at here each segment it is called metamere or somite and i already mentioned that these segments may be equal or not so look each segment is called metamere or somite if the segmentations are similar in any animal body then it is called homonomous metamerism for example the the segments that present in the animal belongs to phylum annelida but if uh, it is dissimilar then it is called heterodromous metamerism for example in case of uh, shrimp the segments are not all are equal some of the segments are large in size some of the segments are small in size like that that is called heterodromous metamerism metamerism is of three types external metamerism the uh, um, example of external metamerism it is arthropoda internal metamerism and the example of internal metamerism it is vertebrate animal and both external and internal metamerism we can conclude this it is a true metamerism and it is uh, annelida that means the body is uh, uh, composed of segments and these segments are from outside and inside both two sides the both external and if the both external and internal metamerism is called true metamerism then you can we can say external metamerism and internal metamerism body is externally segmented internal segment metamerism body is internally segmented so this true metamerism it is pseudo metamerism and the most important line is some animals for example snail starfish sea urchin sea cucumber never shows any sort of metamerism so this is about metamerism then just observe this figure this figure shows what this figure shows look at here if this is a zygote the zygote divide longitudinally that is the cleavage of the zygote then uh, in the, in the zygote then the cells divide through transversely and at last it form a ball like structure a ball like structure 16 cell structure like here 16 cell structure it is the morula then approximately 100 cell structure this is the blastula inside the blastula there is a cavity this is this is called blastocell the cell of blastula it is called blastoderm and in later stage the cell of blastula it goes inwardly through the process of invagination 
and due to invagination of the cellular layer of the blastula the new stage it is formed and it is called gastrula and in case of gastrula the, uh, this is the outermost or dorsal side cellular layer, this is the innermost or ventralized cellular layer. The outermost cellular layer, it is called ectoderm, derm means layer, cellular layer, ectoderm. Innermost cellular layer, it is called endoderm. In the animal kingdom, there are some animals. The, the, this is the gastrula stage, we can conclude this, it is the embryonic stage. And the future organ or organ systems are developed from this uh, ectoderm and endoderm or sometimes here it is the mesoderm mesoderm for example in case of human body skin teeth nails hair etc they are derived from ectoderm a layer the respirate uh, the uh, skeletal system blood circulatory system uh, circulatory system etc it is developed from the mesoderm layer and some glands inner wall of the elementary canal it is developed from the endoderm layer so this is why these layers of cell during embryonic stage during the gastrula stage this cellular layer it is called germ layer in the animal kingdom there are some animals in which at their early stage at their embryonic gastrula stage only two cellular layers are there for example <coughs> and the cellular layers are ectoderm and endoderm and their future organ and organ systems are developed from these two cellular layer and this is why that animals it is called diploblastic animal they are called diploblastic animal so and in case of uh, other group of animal in which three cellular layers are formed they are called triploblastic animal so then now the next basis of classification of animal kingdom it is about germ layer so what is germ layer during embryonic development the zygote after repeated division attain a multicellular structure then the cells are arranged in two or three layers these layers are called germ layer germ layers are the collection of cells from during animal embryogenesis found in gastrula stage the gastrula may be of two or three layers these layers of gastrula are called germ layers which play a significant role in primary classification of animals according to the germ layer the animals are of two types these are three types sorry three types uh, perhaps uh, mm, you can also say it is two types diploblastic animal and triploblastic animal that is this is x for extra information some scientists uh, they also refer uniblastic animal uh, what is uniblastic animal? They are simplest multicellular organism. Their body is composed with only one layer of cells. Uh, for example, of uniblastic animal, the examples example is the animals belongs to phylum Porifera. Then diploblastic animal, animal having outer ectoderm and inner endoderm, and undifferentiated in between them are called diploblastic animal. For example, it is the hydra from phylum Nidoria. Not only Hydra, all the animals belong to phylum Nidoria. They are diploblastic animal, though in between the ectoderm and endoderm, they are also a acellular layer, that is the mesoglia. Then triploblastic animal, animals having outer ectoderm and middle mesoderm and inner endoderm are called triploblastic animal. And the example of triploblastic animal, it is the animal which belongs to phylum Platyhelminthes to Chordata. So my dear boys and girls, uh, today we discuss uh, about the symmetry, metamerism, then uh, germ layer, basis of classification. So this is uh, for today, my dear boys and girls, just note down today's uh, homework, write down the homework, draw the label diagram of symmetry, different symmetry that found in the element, uh, animal kingdom. and. Uh, draw the diagram of metamerism and this is all for today so dear boys and girls be fine everybody